In this video, we're going to be looking at what we call one-sided limits. So we're going to look to see, as we approach from the right, we're going to call this the right-hand limit. As we approach from just the right, um, what y value are we approaching if we approach just from the right? And that's going to be notated by a little plus sign to the top right of our target x value. We also want to know what we're approaching from the left. And that's going to be notated by a little minus sign to the top right of our target x value. So we're going to consider what's happening from, from the left and what's happening from the right. We're going to consider those two separate limits. So those are called the one-sided limits. So one thing we want to be careful about is while we do have the one-sided limits, is that the, the two-sided limits that we talked about in the last section, the two-sided limits are only going to exist if the left-hand sided limit and the right-hand side limit are exactly the same. So these two values have to match in order for the two-sided limit to exist. All right, so this is important. While we do have the one-sided limits and they can exist separate from each other, the double-sided limit, uh, the left and right-hand limits have to match. We have to be approaching the same value from both sides. So let's see an example of this. So here in example one, we're asked to find the limit of our function f. And this time we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 2, but simply from the right. So only from the right. So here's my target x value of 2, and I want to get as close to that from the right as I can. So notice that I'm starting over here and I'm moving toward the target x value. And we're getting really close to it from the right side. So it looks like we're getting close to a y value of 2. So the, the right-hand side of the limit here is going to be 2. Now, as I approach from the left, so we're going to glide along the graph from the left, we're going to get as close to our target x value of 2 as we can. And remember, this means that we're approaching from the left. It looks like I'm getting close to a y value of 3. So the left-hand side of the limit would be 3. So here we have what we call one-sided limits. So as we get close and approach our target x value from the right, and as we get close, close and approach our x value from the left. Now, down here, this third limit just says as x approaches 2. So this implies the two-sided limit. So there is no notation to say approach from the left and from the right. So we're actually approaching from both sides. Now, what we notice is that as we approach from the left and as we approach from the right, we're not approaching one particular y value. We're approaching two different ones. So in this case, since the left and right-hand limits don't match, we would say that the double-sided limit or the two-sided limit does not exist. All right, in example two. We're asked to uh, approach negative 1, so negative 1 is our target x value, and we're asked to approach from the right side of this target x value. So we're going to glide along the graph approaching from the right side of that target x value. So as we approach from the right, it looks like we're getting close to a y value of 2. Okay, the next one asks to approach from the left. So we're going to glide along the graph and we're going to approach from the left side. It looks like the on the left side of our target x value that the y values are increasing forever. So they're going up to positive infinity. Since we're not approaching a particular y value, we will say the left-hand limit does not exist. So clearly, if one of the limits does not exist, then the double-sided limit will also not exist. Okay, they clearly do not match. and if one of the one-sided limits doesn't, matter, doesn't exist, then the double-sided limit, of course, would not exist. All right here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the, le the right-hand sided limit, the left-hand sided limit, and then the two-sided limit. So this time, our target x value is 1, so I'm going to highlight that. And we're looking to approach from the right for our first problem. So we're going to glide along the graph, approaching that x value from the right. OK, so as we do that, it looks like from the right side of the graph, approaching that target x value, we're hitting a y value of 2, or we're getting really close to a y value of 2. OK, from the left, glide along the graph, approaching from the left of that target x value. It looks like we're getting close to a y value of 0, right there on the x-axis. 
So in this case, the double-sided limit or the two-sided limit would not exist because if they do not match, then the double-sided limit cannot exist. So here we will say D and E does not exist. Okay, we want to be careful about something in this particular example. Um, our target x value for all three of our limits appears to be 3, positive 3. So we're going to make sure we're focused on positive 3 first. Um, we are asked to approach from the right. So here's one thing that's really important. We want to get very, very close to our target x value. So when we look at our graph, as we approach from the right, we're going to get really close to that value. We want to know as we get really close to that x value of 3, what is the y value? So the y value, of course, looks like 3. Now we want to approach from the left side. Now one thing, sometimes I get this question, as I, how come we don't say that, oh, it would be 2, a y value of 2? Well, that's not close enough to our target x value. Can we get closer to our target x value? Yes, we can. So this is actually from the left. We want to get really close to our target x value. So get as close as you possibly can. The closer I get to that target x value of 3, what y value are we approaching? And it looks like from both sides we're approaching 3. So since the left and right side limits um, both exist, and they're actually exactly the same this time, then we would say that the double-sided limit exists and would exist at 3. So since they match and they exist, then the double-sided limit or the two-sided limit exists as well and will be the same value for both of the limits.